Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I welcome you all in this lecture. Today we are going to discuss how one can infer whether cause of cancer is a dominant or a recessive uh, mutations, and we can infer this finding by age at disease onset. So, uh, whether the cancer affected individual is of relatively younger age as compared to elderly individuals. So, uh, I am uh, deciphering this question with one example that is of retinoblastoma. Retinoblastoma is a disease affecting 1 in 20,000 children and is usually a younger age uh, kids. Now it is existing in two forms. One is the unilateral so one eye is involved. In some cases both the eyes get infected. There is a tumor formation in both eyes and which is causing an extrinsic pressure, extrinsic amount of pressure on optic nerve too. So uh, we want to understand how the retinoblastoma causing gene RB localized on 13 chromosome distinguish a dominant or a recessive pattern. As we know cancer exists both on familial history patients as well as in sporadic forms. So let's take a look on familial retinoblastoma cases. This individual, the, in the kid which is born over here, is having a mutated RB allele on one of its 13th allele is mutated. So it failed to transcribe this RB allele. But there is the other counter, being a diploid genome, there is another counter allele which is acting perfectly fine. So the cell demand for RB protein is being accomplished. However, under the influence or during the course of its uh, life cycle, there may be a risk of any probable mutation affecting the normal allele as well. Affecting the normal allele as well. That probable hit is called as first somatic mutation. The reasons of this somatic mutations could be multiple ones. It could be a radiation, it could be any hit or uh, genetic uh, duplication, replication, genomic rearrangement, maybe multiple factors are involved. So based on that first hit, both the RB alleles get mutated. The first one having a germline history, the second one is being hit by the environmental influence. So it results in a disease onset. Now the disease onset usually become bilateral because every cell of this individual contains a mutant RB allele. So the chances of one hit lead to a disease provocation on by both eyes. Bilateral eyes are affected. Well what is the case of sporadic retinoblastoma? Sporadic retinoblastoma means both the RB alleles are perfectly fine. They are producing RB protein required by the cell. At some time point, one of the allele on one tissue get affected. Now, this allele failed to produce ample amount of RB protein. But there is a substitute available, which is ad uh, adequately addressing the cellular demands. Then there is a second event which is required, second somatic mutation which should be present again on the same region 13th chromosome and on the same allele same region and same location on the same cell so these two mutations lead to the formation of a unilateral eye tumor formation unilateral eye involvement alright so just a single eye is involved if there is no prior familial history of retinoblastoma while if the, in the familial retinoblastoma cases there is already a history of uh, familial cases so the patient just require first somatic mutation hit. So as it indicates that let's say the disease uh, both the individuals are at zero year now let's consider the first hit as first year so just one event is sufficient enough to provoke a disease in familial child as compared to the, ch uh, the child which have a sporadic retinoblastoma, the child age may exceed from 2 years to 3, 4, 5 or furthermore depending upon uh, the environment and the factors present inside the cell. 
so the chances are quite uh, requirement of first somatic and then second somatic mutation is required for sporadic cases okay so it means the disease at early onset disease at early onset have a germline history because this is a germline mutation present in every cell of that individual germline over here this is a sporadic one so only the somatic mutation which is localized to any particular tissue or any infected area so we can uh, infer the same findings whether use by using this graphical approach Alfred Kernson was the scientist who proposed this idea of two hit model and one hit model he says that uh, the germline mutation carrying individuals always have a early disease onset when compared to somatic or sporadic models where there is a a requirement of two somatic changes or two anomalies to happen for a tumor initiation so if we look at this graph what we are observing over here on x-axis we see age in months for the kids now over here we say the percentage of cases not yet diagnosed at age indicated so from zero to let's say six months of age or let's say three months of age so zero to three months of age there is a minor hit but there is one case which has been reported over here so generally speaking the incidence of retinoblastoma the incidence of retinoblastoma are higher are higher bilateral line have a higher incidence of retinoblastoma in the patients with the age less than two years i am writing it two years just with an intention so that you can get a distinctive identity so the babies born and are affected with a tumor formation less than two years of age have a background history of germline mutation as we have explained over here familial retinoblastoma they carry a mutant rb allele and some very early age they got first somatic mutation on the same region on the counterpart of that allele which is actually normal at the time of birth but this hit led to a provocation of bilateral retinoblastoma tumor formation when this result is compared with unilateral uh, retinoblastoma cases the disease onset is usually beginning in the patients with more than two years of age and it continues and the pattern continues but the patients with one by involvement have an extended uh, disease onset late disease onset would be the proper word to mention over here so this is how we can differentiate based on age at disease onset that whether the pattern is dominant or a recessive one another interesting thing that uh, whether upon treatment the risk of individuals suffering from retinoblastoma bilateral or unilateral could be minimizing whether there is a secondary cancer formation we can notice in these cases over here it has been observed that the individuals suffering from unilateral retinoblastoma cases the chances of suffering from any other cancer during the course of uh, treatment are extended its life uh, age is relatively low only 5% individuals will be suffering from any other cancer when contrastly observed with the bilateral retinoblastoma cases so here you can see the rise is substantial enough this means that the germline mutation present in every cell of that familial retinoblastoma patient may suffer from additional complications of osteosarcoma lungs liver cancer based on the early disease onset we can infer this information so this is all from my side regarding the alfred kunson two hit model and one hit model so we are going to uh, further decipher how these uh, one and two hits what kind of possibility an individual have regarding first somatic mutation or second somatic mutations what are the these things i am going to elaborate this 
in subsequent lecture. Thank you very much for your time and attention.